Johnny Mac with your daily comedy news. The last batch of late night jokes I saw, I just didn't care for it, didn't find them funny. The only one I liked was from Seth Meyers. He said, in honor of Disneyland Paris's 30th anniversary and Women's History Month in March, Disneyland Paris announced that Minnie Mouse will wear a dark blue and black polka dotted pantsuit designed by Stella McCartney. That's a lot of setup. Here's the joke. Unfortunately, that still won't make up for the fact that you brought your wife to Paris and then took her to Disneyland. Hey, what's that music? Is it? Could it be? Yes, it is the return of the Comedy Power Rankings. This is something I do every now and then. I'm going to try and do it a little more regularly, where I rank the comedians according to their power. Now, what is power? I don't know. You know what when you hear it. Ready? Comedy Power Rankings. The most powerful comedian right now is Pete Davidson. Why? Because we're all talking about Pete Davidson. He's hanging out with Kim Kardashian. Wait to hear what Kanye West said about Pete Davidson later in this episode. Is he funny? I don't know. He's got charisma. Pete Davidson. Most powerful comedian right now. Number two. And this guy is moving up the charts quickly. He's often at the top of the charts. Joe Rogan. Making friends. Making enemies. Neil Young's had it. Spotify's got his back. By the way, on Friday, I saw that Joe Rogan was trending. A- That's not even funny. And B, you're acting like Joe Rogan has a comb over or is trying to pretend that he's not bald or he's trying to grow his hair back. I'm pretty sure Joe Rogan, whatever you think of him, is pretty secure with the way he looks. Joe Rogan, not funny. Number three, Tom Segura and Christina P as a pair. They are your number three on the Comedy Power rankings. They're into NFTs. They're announcing Netflix specials and books. Number four, Jim Gaffigan. Seen a lot of interviews with Jim Gaffigan in the last few weeks. Number five, this guy's cooled off a little bit. John Mulaney. Yeah, all right, you're walking around with a baby. We're kind of bored with the whole thing now. Time to get out on the road, John Mulaney. Tell some jokes. We're over the Olivia Munn thing. Happy at a baby. New topic. Next up, Tim Dillon. I see his podcast is shooting up the charts. And you know what I always say about Tim Dillon? One day he's going to step on the landmine and I'm going to come on this podcast and be like, I never said to listen to Tim Dillon. I am totally going to deny you, Tim Dillon. But until then, I've been listening to your podcast. Theo Vaughn, always up on the comedy charts. Underrated, not talked about much. And I do prep for this podcast every day. Not in too many news stories. Ricky Gervais, out there pushing afterlife. Everybody seems to like that show. Ricky's often at the top of the comedy power rankings. I was picking your brains on the Facebook group, which is Daily Comedy News Podcast Group on Facebook, and you were like, hey, can you suggest some new artists? Well, if you want to listen to the weekly comedy thing, which is the show I host for free, well, I don't host it for free. I am paid to host that, but you can listen for free. It's on the Live by Live app, Live X Live in your app store. Played some quote unquote new artists this week, or maybe people that you don't know. Dustin Nickerson, he's got a new album called Overwhelmed Artist. Another person you might not know is Neil Brennan, co-creator of Chappelle's show. Neil's been around, but I'm not sure he's a household name. And I've been on a Robert Schimmel kick. I can't believe Robert's most recent album was from 1999. We got nothing in this century from Robert Schimmel, who passed away. I'm doing this from memory, I think, in 2010. They all appear on this week's weekly comedy thing, so that's some stuff for you to check out. All right, Pete Davidson from TMZ, your home for comedy news. Sources close to Pete Davidson confirm what DJ Academics, and DJ Academics spells his name with several Ks. He puts the Ks where I would have put C, but that's why I'm not a hip DJ. DJ Academics had been telling people, Kanye has been telling everybody with an earshot that Pete Davidson has AIDS. TMZ says we're told Kanye's claim has made for a few awkward phone calls between Pete Davidson and mutual friends he has with Kanye. They're all confused and disturbed by the childish behavior. Amen. Hey, do you like scrubs? I love scrubs. My wife is a doctor and she was going to medical school when the scrubs cast was in medical school on the show. Know what I mean? Didn't phrase that well. You follow me. Mrs. Mack has always said, well, Mrs. Mack is a a character on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. That's exactly what my wife looks like. Looks like Mrs. No, that's a joke. (laughs) Um, My wife says that Scrubs is the most realistic medical show, hospital show. And when I would watch that show with her, I saw a lot of things that were going on in her life. And some of the more adult characters on the show were, I think, based on people that worked in her hospital at the time. So we love Scrubs. The cast will be reuniting at the ATX Television Festival. That's right, Zach Braff, Donald Faison, Sarah Chalk, John C. McGinley, Judy Reyes, Neil Flynn, and Kristen Miller. 
They'll do a live panel. This thing is June 2nd to the 5th in Austin, Texas. Everything seems to be in Austin now. The Scrubs reunion was previously intended to mark the 10th anniversary of the series ending, but, you know, COVID and stuff. I am, like, maybe two years behind on the Scrubs podcast. I love those guys. Well, I really love Zach. Donald sometimes on the pod. Dial it down, buddy. Dial it down. And that's why I've fallen behind on my listening. Plus, my phone is always full. I listen to a lot of podcasts at two and a half speed. Natasha Legero will have a new show. It's called Rat in the Kitchen. Really? It is described as being far more than a traditional cooking show. Viewers get to play detective over a game of cat and mouse. I'm intrigued. Over the course of the 10 episode season, a mix of professional chefs and passionate home cooks compete in a series of creative cooking challenges. All right. Earning cash on the bank for every dish that impresses Chef Ludo. All right. While attempting to expose an undercover mole, a.k.a. the rat, Determine to sabotage the dishes. Wait, so it's the mole. Remember Anderson Cooper, the CNN guy used to host the mole. So it's the mole cooking show. Yeah. Anyway, you're trying to expose the mole who's determined to sabotage the dishes and undermine their chances at victory. At the close of each episode, both cooks and viewers will determine who they believe is the rat. If the cooks guess correctly, they win their bank. But if they're duped, then the rat walks away with the cheddar. That's some well-written copy. I appreciate you. Rat in the Kitchen premieres TBS, March 31st, 9 p.m. Eastern. And a sad story from the New York Post, unvaccinated comedian Christian Cabrera died from COVID-19 at the age of 40, just two days after texting his brother and revealing his regret at not getting the COVID vaccine. Before his tragic passing, Cabrera was on social media and shared, Been here almost a week in ICU, now not breathing on my own with COVID pneumonia infection in both lungs. This has to be the worst pain I ever had in my life. Thanks for all the love and prayers, everyone. I can hear all your prayers in my sleep. Thank you and hope to see you all soon. Cabrera passed away just over a week later. Today's Daily Comedy News is brought to you by Palace Intrigue. I'm the writer on that. Is it a quick five-minute look at what's going on with the royal family? Whew! Harry and Meghan always mixing it up. We don't even really get into the Andrew thing. That's like CD. We're there to have a good time. We like goofing on stuff like Kate Middleton being in charge of rugby. Like stuff like that. Palace Intrigue, wherever you get your shows. Bob Odenkirk will release his first memoir. It is called Comedy, 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 Drama. That's out March 1st. Dave Chappelle's very controversial comedy special, The Closer, has nabbed two nominations from the Directors Guild of America and the Producers Guild of America. Chappelle himself received a PGA nomination in the category of Outstanding Producer of Live Entertainment, Variety, Sketch, Stand-Up, and Talk Television. From Chortle, some British comedians are releasing uh, stand-up albums in the U.S. I almost said CD, because I'm from 1994. I guess they could put it out on CD. British comedians John Pearson and Chris Martin, remember that name for the upcoming joke, have recorded stand-up albums for American labels. Pearson's show is called What Have You Been Up To? It was recorded in October in Nottingham. It's an hour of unscripted crowd work. I always dig that. Pearson said it was nerve-wracking going out with no material, but also freeing. I felt that coming out of a pandemic, most audiences would just want to be involved in the show, so I made this one about them. Chris Martin's show is called All Over the Place. It'll be out February 18th. This one made up of sets recorded around South California, which I don't think is in the UK. Of course it's not. Martin joked he gave up bad weather and bad customer service for sunshine and gun crime. The album's pretty upbeat because life can be pretty depressing a lot of time, but I choose to look for the more fun aspects to talk about. Now, Chris Martin shares a name with the guy from Coldplay. Does he think some people might accidentally buy the album, believing him to be the lead singer of Coldplay? Chris Martin says he'll absolutely take their money. Can I tell you, way back at Sirius, one of the interns loaded into the system. Some tracks by, I think the guy's name was Bill Hicks. Now, there's a well-respected comedian named Bill Hicks. There's also, like, a jazz singer or something. And you know how I found out about it? I was listening to the radio station and wondered why the hell we were playing four and a half minutes of jazz on the comedy station. The intern didn't actually listen to the tracks that the intern loaded. That's a no-no in radio, everybody. Do you like The Office? Do you like playing games on your phone? Well... The Office, colon, Somehow We Manage, is a new game available on iOS and Android. The game is based around collecting characters from the show, putting them to work to sell paper. How do you do that? You tap the screen, and then you wait for numbers to go up. Sounds thrilling. And it took a week of me telling you you could go to podinbox.com slash dailycomedynews. It took a week of me saying that and telling you you could leave a voicemail. Finally, somebody took the hint. Here's Lane Spurkus. 
Hey, gang. This is Lane Spurkus. I'm a longtime listener, first-time caller. I love the Daily Comedy News podcast. I think it's a great digest and have made it part of my morning routine. I used to play it in the car while I would drive my teenage daughters to school, but they rolled their eyes so hard I had to take them to the ophthalmologist, and those appointments aren't cheap. So I guess my question is, does the podcast carry insurance? Does the podcast carry insurance? Does Aziz Ansari have a smartphone? That's your comedy news for today. <laughs> Follow the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Thank you, Lane. Podinbox.com slash daily comedy news. Leave a voicemail. You know what to do. See you tomorrow.